every girl got somebody they had cheat on you with. I found out the hard way I did. It was my girl birthday. She loved Rod Wave. I took her to a Rod Wave concert. When Rod Wave walked on stage, she started screaming, Oh my God, it's Rod Wave. Oh my God. I was like, Ho, I'm right here. You know what I'm saying? You don't do that when I come home from work. Why are you cheering like that when he make an entrance? Like when I walk through the door from work, you don't be screaming my name like that. Dinner not even cooked. So why are you treating him like this? You know what I mean? And then he started singing, you know what I'm saying? Girl of my dreams. He looked at her, smiled, she fainted. And the hoe tried to follow me. That's what made me. She tried to follow me. I let her drop. I let her hit the ground. I started walking off. I left her there. This dude was like, hey, sir, your girl fainted. You leaving her there. I said, no, that ain't my girl. That's his. I left her. I broke up with her because honestly, it was very disrespectful how she treated Black Ram 313 back at it again. You know why? Well, it's because this is therapeutic, man. Back again with another video. Hence, another therapy session. Today's topic and title is why it should treat you like a celebrity and be your fan. Jumping right into the video proper. Here we go. You know, the creature views celebrities as deity. Above human or at least the best of human beings. And of course, we know this is not true. Human is human is human. Full of flaws imperfections now some human beings have talents and others do not however humans are all unique in some way form or fashion whether it be a negative or positive however because of the twisted mind of the creature human is not necessarily human it actually believes that some humans are less human or come with no flaws or less flaw than others Let's examine this to tell you what I mean. For example, MJ, good old Michael Jackson. In times past, when he was alive on his shows, there would be beasts that would pass out just by being in his presence. Now move on to today. We have old Drakey boy for the youngers and the Idris Elbas for the older. The question is, what will your beast do for them? Here's the truth. The creature is only with you because Drake is not accessible and available. Now, I know this might be difficult for you to understand, but in the mind of the creature, a large number of them dream about the opportunity to be with such a one like Drake or Idris Elba and will most certainly be on the team and will most certainly wait their turn, even if they were number 200 or 300 out of a rotation what I mean is this if Drake said hey I want you on the team faithful and loyal but you are number 239 and I can only get to you maybe once every 14 weeks do you think that the beast won't go of course the beast will say yes think about celebrity is in a relationship with others so my question to you, why do you feel that you should offer the creature monogamy when no such precondition exists for the celebrity or even thuggo in many cases? And if you, yeah, I'm talking to you, if you can't be the celebrity in the life of the creature, man, then you should not want to be in the life of the creature, at least not in a serious way. Here's a Bible verse. And now I. I know many of you don't believe the book. However, let's look at this as a piece of literature from history, ancient history, but the history of a people who believe strongly in patriarchal values. So let's look at the text from this standpoint. If you're not a believer, that's OK, man. But for this exercise, let's put on our academic hat for one moment just to look at the scriptures, the ancient text from a historical, cultural, and literary standpoint. That's the purpose. Now the book says, the Bible, says that the fee beast should honor its husband. And not only just to honor its husband, but to reverence. That word reverence is key. Listen up here. To reverence, the reverence of a husband the biblical definition is to be in awe of. That's the definition of the word reverence. 
Ephesians chapter 5, verse 33 reads, Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself and the wife see that she reverences her husband. Keyword reverence. That's Ephesians chapter 5, verse 33. KJV. Notice the reverence as in reverend, right? The reverence. Reverence the husband to be in awe of. Here's the definition from the modern dictionary. I gave you the biblical one. Now, here's the modern dictionary's definition of reverence. Quote, reverence is defined as deep respect. Or is a name given to a holy figure in a religious institution? An example of reverence is when you show deep and complete respect for the Bible as the word of God. The respectful term used to address a priest is an example of reverence, your reverence. To consider or to treat with profound awe. And respect, venerate. That's the definition of reverence from your dictionary.com. Profound, isn't it? This is the way that the succubus, the rotten chiquita banana, the rabies snow bunny may ling in them. This is how they see celebrities. And don't forget Passa, not you. They are in awe of posters when they're young of their favorite celebrities following their favorite celebrities on the gram posting quotes by their favorite celebrities in complete awe of going to pay money to see their favorite celebrity they're willing to do any and everything for their favorite celebrities but when it comes to you old friend well you looked at as ordinary But the book says that the creature is supposed to be in awe of you, not Idris, not Drake, not any of its favorite celebrities, not Steph Curry or whomever, but in awe of you to look at you as a champion, to look at you as great. Now imagine. If your succubus, the B-dub, treated you like it would treat its pasta, going out of its way for the pasta to show dedication and service and adoration, shouldn't this be reserved for you? Reverence. Reverencing you like it would its favorite celebrity. If Drake walked into a room, the creature would lose its mind. And would have no problem doing whatever Drake desired. This is how you should be treated. And if you can't get this type of treatment, then you have to question what are you doing in a close relationship with the beast? As I've always said, if a guy jumped out the bushes with a switchblade, as we used to call it back in the day, wouldn't you? Sacrifice your very life for the creature that is with you. Wouldn't you do this? Something you can only do once. This is how much you love and care about the beast. This is your expected service and sacrifice. And you would do so without hesitation because it's biologically hardwired for you to do so to protect what you believe belongs to you. Right. And in that moment, you are showing your complete dedication therefore I say unto you when it comes to the creature that you have in your life shouldn't it based upon that ultimate sacrifice that you would make shouldn't it live every moment of its life in complete and utter dedication to you and only you wouldn't that make sense And this should be done without any preconditions or qualifications. All that, the bag, the bag. No, 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 no. My life exceeds a bag. Your expectations of me exceeds a bag. Think about that. 
It is not about the bag. It's about your life. Again, I say the service and dedication that the creature should have for you should be without any preconditions because you would give your life to protect the creature without any preconditions because it is your nature to do so. Likewise, no preconditions should be set upon you. But we know that the beast does not and cannot see you like a celebrity. Therefore, it's safe to say that the beast truly has nothing for you, nor should you have anything for it. Always ask yourself, when you're dealing with the beast, is the beast in front of me right now treating me like it would treat Drake? If Drake was here instead of me or Idris Elba or any of its favorite celebrities, TV preachers, star athlete, whatever, are you being treated like a celebrity? And what would be the treatment of such guys? We already know the answer. The treatment would be grand. Whatever you imagine that treatment would be in your head, that's what it is times 10. Such a one will be treated well, exceptionally well, without preconditions and qualifications, just because it's their favorite celebrity. Think about it. Now, this is that other level, man. If you're going to be in a relationship, this should be your expectation. But since we know that the creature cannot meet such an expectation, then no relationship or commitment should ever be given or granted. This is fire game right here. Thermonuclear game. You should see the creature like a fan. Why? Because the mind of the creature is so easily awestruck by a celeb and overly intrigued by the media. The creature doesn't understand that celebrities are human too. The beast lives for media, social acceptance and validation. You know how disingenuous the creature is? The beast likes celebrities. Okay, I get that. It likes material things. I get that. But it likes these things because everyone else does. This is the group and hive mind at work. It can have no interest of its own. And we should see no value in any creature that places such a high value on following the crowd. For the beast lives for social acceptance and validation. Nothing original, nothing unique about the fee beast. But you, as a thinking man, I hope that you are the exact opposite of the creature because typically the way the crowd goes means that you go the other way as a thinking man. And I know I'm preaching to the choir, I know you guys are not followers in that manner, but such weakness. The drive for only the material, the superficial and the social weakness is that. Now, keep in mind that the beast will cheat on you with a celebrity if one walks through the door for sure. Or even a dude who pulls up in a Bentley Rolls Royce or Lambo, the creature will go. It doesn't matter if you and the beast have been together 5, 10 or 20 years. All of that can go down the drain in an instant if an athlete or celebrity or just a dude with money shows up. There is no limit to the creature's hypergamy. The beast will do more for a celebrity in five minutes than what it has done for you after being in a relationship for 20 years. Know this about the beast. As I mentioned before, but it bears repeating because it's relevant here. If you think that you have to be in a relationship with the creature 
today to get what everybody else got for free, you need to reconsider. And you also need to learn and expect the best to start valuing yourself. You are the prize. You're the one with the provision and the protection that the creature so desperately claims to need. You are the one who are and who is the covering. And out of you comes life. Out of you comes everything that the beast sees, has, or could ever become. Why? Because civilization was built and constructed out of us. Everything that is consumed to sustain life comes out of you. You are the creator of all of this, along with your creator. All of the creatures, necessities, housing, food, clothing, water. You are the one who constructed society and made these things possible to obtain in mass. You're the one who built the infrastructure of nations, created nation states, created civilization. You're at the top. If it wasn't for you, the beast would have none of these things. Why should you be treated like a celebrity? Because you are, or at least you should be in the mind of the beast. Because you have that creative genius in you that's only been given to you. Because you are first, and the beast is secondary and an afterthought. If it were not for you and your generosity and your care and concern that's been hardwired into you from birth, From the beginning of time, from Adam till now and beyond, if it wasn't for your generosity, your care and concern for the creature, what would it have? How would it exist? Not construct civilization on its own. No, a system has to be in place that it could work in. And without you creating that system, where would the beast be? Rhetorical question you already know. A quick but true story. I think I mentioned it before, but I'll mention it here again because it bears repeating because it's relevant to the topic. I met a fee beast on a dating site a little while ago, not too long ago. And the creature told me that its mother's best friend somehow knows the rapper Common. Common from Chicago. I'm from Chicago. This fee beast is from Chicago. And the beast went on to tell me that, hey, if we get into a relationship, as we had already monkey danced, but if we get into a relationship and I see common, the beast expressed that it would have to have a pass from me to monkey dance with common, the rapper, because it's common and it's her favorite artist. And, um, the creature is in love with Common. And uh, as a guy is in her life, I'm supposed to say, OK, that's Common. You get a pass. <laughs> now, this was being told to me during the catch and release as the beast was letting me know who it was and what it expects and what type of relationship it would like to have. But it had to give me that, uh, you know, that prereq for a relationship that any guy in its life would have to understand that if it ran into common, which is not all impossible, the question is if common would want to be involved, that's another story. But, you know, if it possibly meets common, because for some reason it would always miss an opportunity to run into common. As I said before, the beast's mother knows common, or I should say knows one of common's relatives. Therefore, a meeting shouldn't be impossible, but likely instead of highly unlikely for some. But I'm supposed to say, hey, you know what? It's common. Go right ahead. Now, of course, I didn't take this creature seriously, but what if I was fool enough to do so? I'm supposed to wife up someone like this? Someone whose mentality is like this? And this beast is an older beast. In its 40s. But I'm supposed to understand that, hey, that's common. You get a pass. Look at that mentality. 
Look at what the beast would do for its favorite celebrity. And I bet you. Most beasts, even if married for a number of years. Still thinks and behaves like this fee beast that I met for its favorite celebrity. It would need a pass. Now, some of you dudes out there are so funky. That you would probably give the creature a pass, right? <laughs> Hopefully that's not none of you, not none of us. But the point here is this. This is the generalized mentality of the majority of fee beast. That you are expected to provide and protect and wife up and commit to. If this is indeed the mentality, which we can prove easily and which I have done here so far, what then is the benefit to a relationship with such an individual? The question is rhetorical. You already know. The beast said that meeting its favorite celebrity, that it would have to monkey dance. I'm supposed to just stand by, huh? No, thank you. So think about this. The next time you look at your succubus, when you look at it in its eyes and and feel all those wonderful feelings of love, care and concern. When you look at your beast and you feel those feelings, man, understand that the beast would throw it all the way. Years of a commitment, marriage and a relationship for one chance at its favorite celebrity. And this is what you get. When you are in love, what the f now, since we know this, fellas, I conclude that it is foolish, reckless and goofy to invest in the beast. Those who do so in this day and age will undoubtedly regret doing such. The beast is for the streets. Therefore, catch and release. Never trust a solipsistic media influence mind of the creature. A mind that's clogged up with celebrity worship, gossip, and the need for social acceptance and validation of strangers, family, and friends. Who you are and what you are is last on the creature's list of impact and influence. The beast would rather listen to the media and its friends before listening to you. But you will protect this thing with your life, though. That's the crazy part. The beast is not worth that. We have to stop treating the beast like a celebrity ourselves. Stop being awestruck. Stop being in awe of. Stop reverencing that round posterior. Stop pedestalizing the fee beast. Stop feeding the energy vampire with all of your attention on social media. Your value is so far above and so great, so far above the beast. We just have to realize it and act like it. But how do we do this? Well, we do this by keeping it casual and occasional. We do this by the pump and let the creature dump the catch and release method by Black Ram 313 because we don't date. We recreate. Black Realm 313 telling you not to treat the beast like a celebrity, but it should treat you like a celebrity and you should treat it like a fan. I'm out.